Only Revolution Can Save Life on Earth An Essay by Eric Schechter The end of all life on Earth is nearer than most people realize, probably by war or warming. War and warming continue, based on lies, because in the short run they make a few rich men richer. But even the rich will starve when their bunkers run out of canned food. First, nuclear war. It's growing more likely. When it happens, it will kill most people right away. Then it will be followed by radioactive fallout and nuclear winter, killing whoever remains. And second, runaway warming. It has already begun, and it's speeding up. Soon, crop failures will kill most people and end civilization. But even after that, feedback loops will continue raising the temperature, killing anyone who is left. And in the time remaining, we're being tormented by poverty, racism, sexism, and other unnecessary cruelties. Can we solve these problems together, through friendship, sharing, and cooperation? Maybe if we hurry. How about through reforms, market solutions, and working within the system? No, the system has failed for decades, and continuing it any longer would be suicide. In fact, our socioeconomic system is causing the problems. But few people see the system as it really is. It's hard to face facts when they're contrary to everything you've ever been told. Most people are in denial and immersed in the system's myths. Here are seven common myths. 1. Democracy Really, we have plutocracy, rule by the rich. Gillens and Page showed statistically that our laws serve the rich, not the general public, regardless of elections. Their data is from recent decades, but history is no different. The USA has been a plutocracy thinly disguised as a democracy ever since its founding in land theft, genocide, slavery, and indentured servitude. James Madison, the chief author of the Constitution, said that it was important, quote, to keep the spirit and form of popular government with only a minimum of the substance, end quote. Reforms full of loopholes are just for show. 2. Free Press The corporate press says little of importance. That's because it's owned by the same plutocrats who sell weapons, oil, political power, and everything else. It will gladly sensationalize the superficial differences between the two money parties, but nothing that could inspire change. Mostly, the corporate press lies by omission. It never discusses historical context, nor our society's real foundations, nor the very different world that is possible. 3. Blame Our myths blame corruption on individuals, but the truth is that the system is set up to defile everyone. Property separates us, so we're all rivals, not allies. Your loss is not my loss, and may even be my gain. Competition brings fear, hate, lies, unconcern, greed, etc. The poor compete against each other to survive. The powerful compete against each other for short-term profits to keep them in power a bit longer. 4. Neutrality What is an honest businessman, anyway? Can someone be honest and respectful to people he doesn't know personally? while basing his life on profiting off of them? Whatever or whoever he doesn't love, eventually he must objectify, exploit, ruin, and discard. That's why our workplaces are dictatorships, our advertisements are deceptions, and we hate Mondays. 
5. Efficiency The myths claim that the market is efficient. Really, the opposite is true, but the inefficiency is hidden in externalities. Those are huge, unmeasured costs like ecocide, borne by community and ecosystem, not by buyer or seller. Externalities, if continued, will kill all of us. For whom is that efficient? 6. Opportunity. Really, there is none. Productivity rises, but wages don't. Gains are pocketed by the owners. Wage slavery means we're free to quit a low-paying job and hunt for another just like it, but starve while hunting. Trade, for labor, rent, anything, favors the trader in the stronger bargaining position, making him stronger still. That increases inequality, which is now huge. Your boss is paid more than you, not because he's smarter or he works harder, but because he's standing between you and the money. Robinson Crusoe, living alone on his island, could not become rich, and even his modest comfort depended on tools and knowledge made by other people. Paraphrasing Balzac, Behind any great fortune is a great theft, generally from the commons and the people. This is not the community we all really want. 7. Human Nature It's not greed, though that's what we are often told. For 300,000 years we were hunter-gatherers. We cooperated, cared, and shared as friends and equals. Sharing is still what we teach our kids, still where we turn in crisis, still who we are genetically. Our big mistake, our switch to private property 12,000 years ago, was just a cultural overlay. We can and must return to sharing. It's the only way we'll solve war and warming, the only way we'll survive, and it will make a happier world, too. The development of the atom bomb was clever, but not wise. If we wise up, there is so much more we could become and could love. Let's find the music to which the whole ecosystem can dance. But first we must learn to talk gently with each other, and see the world as it is and as it can be. We must end the denial and myths, spread love and understanding, and tell the 1% we will no longer serve them. Join the conversation today. Call a meeting, carry a sign, write a song or an essay, copy this essay if you like it.